Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. Welcome back to All Things Cyber. Let's get right into it. We have with us today Andrew, the security guy. Welcome back, brother. Hello, everybody. Good to be oh, here. Thanks for having me. Good to have me. you back. It's, it's always a great fun. show. When you're here, everything goes right. Thank you. I'll uh, try. You're going to be uh, working on the road next month, except for the 30th. I got five shows across the nation, so you yeah, are a popular some fun. man. Uh, I, I try to share. You know, <laughs> everybody share. loves security. Is about sharing, right? You know, we need transparency. We need to share. We need to help each other. That's, that's all I know. That's about. why that's cyber why and security. It's not a career. It's a crusade. That's right. It and really you're, is. you're at the vanguard of the assault. Thank you, brother. Leading Hawaii to a safer place. Baby. <laughs> that's what I'm working on every day. One step at a time. Let's let's talk about safety and security. Let's talk about safety. The sadness in Florida. Yeah. We have another school shooting. Yep. And um, I believe you were MP for a while, Navy. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was out on the ships protection force. Out of barbers, a lot of different things like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. and uh, and I, I, of course, I was Marine MP. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you know, we had to handle guns. And uh, so I don't know about you, but my family, we grew up with guns. We always had sure. a scatter gun and a lever action over the mantelpiece, yep. and uh, we always had handguns uh, all over the place. But we were trained and responsible and and uh we knew n when not to use them yep. and when to use them and how to use them and take care of them and secure them yeah and uh i guess there's people out there that don't know all these things and uh, the arguments for and against gun control and i just i want to touch on a couple of topics today because i've heard some really stupid comments oh, okay. and, and this is what i'm hearing now first of all i support the the, the second amendment fully I love the Second okay. Amendment. Let's own weapons. Great. What I don't support is stupid people owning guns. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, there's no test. I wish there was a scientific test. Like driving test. a car. Right, like a stupid test. I don't like right? stupid people <laughs> owning cars either, so I got a kind of problem. It's just as deadly in a lot of cases, right? So More deadly. <laughs> let's, let's, let's take care of that problem. Um, uh, our administration has rolled back Obama-era gun, uh, gun control mm. to limit uh, mentally uh, unstable people from owning weapons. So mm. now there's more people on the roster that can own weapons. Everybody can get one. Almost everyone can get one. What Gun control is just to make buying a gun a little bit more difficult than going to 7-Eleven and buying some Doritos. Yeah. We, just, you, we just don't want your name, your address, the serial number on the gun. Uh, do you have a criminal background? You know, it's, it's kind of simple. And states sometimes don't even share with each other. And here's the biggest problem. This young man apparently bought a gun legally. He was a legal gun owner, 19 years old, had an AR-15, mm -hmm. and decided to go back to his school where he was kicked out of and start shooting the place up. Now, here's the comments I got on, on social media. People telling me if there had been more gun owners that had guns with them in the school, there'd be less in death. School. In the high school, they wanted, say, teachers and security guards to be armed. So there's arguments that go back and forth, but sure. my, my stance on this is, uh, and this is why I brought up you and I being law enforcement in the past is because when you draw your weapon, the first thing you think is, can I fire this weapon without harming somebody I don't want to harm? I got to have a clean backdrop. And if you're in, say, they said the same thing about the Pulse nightclub. Had everybody had a weapon, there wouldn't be so many deaths. But I think in a nightclub, you got 150 people in a you know 10 square foot space. Everybody shooting. Everybody's shooting. It's a lot of lead. Everybody gets hit. Everybody gets hit. And the same thing with the school. You know, I, I understand the argument that you want people to be able to defend themselves. But on the other hand, if those people aren't trained law enforcement people, mm -hmm. and, and and persistent training, like we trained constantly. Yeah. We were at the range. I don't, know, I don't know if it was monthly, but we also shot non-officially, right? So we were, we were we shot a lot, right? And right. so, and it isn't even that you practice engagement, you practice the rule, the, the rules of escalation, right? So that you, because I had a PR twenty four, and you have a weapon, right? So you have you have a yeah, few non-lethal and lethal means. You have means. a few things on your yeah. belt, right? And you yeah. you have to understand what the situation is in front of you, and you know, do I think that. Uh, teachers could be trained. I think anyone could be trained. As sure. A matter of fact, yeah, you know, yeah. and so, but I do think that that training needs to be licensed. It needs to be official. Um, Constant. My wife always talks about she believes people should have liability insurance. You know, if you're going to own a weapon, that you should be insured. For now, that's it, a great idea. For using it. You've so got to have insurance. And so, the, and so the level that you train to, maybe your insurance is lower because you're a, a level five or a level two or what? whatever it may be. You know, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, 
I'm a fan of, of I guess, the, the Second Amendment. I mean, I, I, I believe I should have the right to own a weapon. I think anyone should have the right to own a weapon if they haven't given that right away by doing something stupid, right. harming someone, perhaps committing a felony of some type. You know, you, there's sometimes when you sort of you've given up your rights because of things you've done, and I, right. I can't help that for others. Um, but normal law-abiding citizens, do I believe that if someone walked in a place and I was armed, I would have the capacity to, and I don't, I don't train like I used to, so mm -hmm. I, I say this kind of with past experience, but do I believe I would have the capacity to uh, perhaps mitigate that situation with that individual? P perhaps. You know, I think, I just don't know. If he's standing in a crowd, I can't make that shot. But I can advance towards him, as, as a guy did in this case who took bullets for students. Now, one, that was one a of hero. the teachers was right. a hero. Yeah. In my advancement, which I would probably do armed or unarmed just because I'm like that, if I'm armed, I got a chance of stopping him. Maybe he stops me, but I stop him also. But sometimes you got to close that distance in order to get a clean shot and not exactly. harm someone else. So, yeah. And we, we were trained about all that, right? So, I mean, it's hard to say. And situationally, you know, I, I work in the technology field that does a lot of active shooter where we want to we wanna isolate this shooter in a place and know where he is, where did the last shot occur, when, when the response is coming to hopefully speed that response. Does it... I hate it when they say it saves people because it doesn't. It's hopefully it does, but the technology by itself is only going to help us respond quickly, right? To because we can isolate where that person is. I'm not. I don't have to cover the whole building. He's in the left wing, third floor, because I have a device there that detects gunshots and sees the infrared muzzle flash and things like that. So when we can use technology to respond quicker, I think that can be helpful. It also help, it aids in the evacuation process for unaffected it areas. Can. You can it take people away can. from harm. Sure, yeah. if you've got if if you've got people who are going to remain and and try to implement some command and control over the um, uh, over an act during an active shooter incident and be able to communicate to people, take shelter here. No, you this group move out, move out the west wing, go down the flight of stairs, leave. You know, if you can direct people that way, um, that's great. But you, you can't really automate that. So someone has to stay there and do command control or do it remotely or, or whatever it may be. So, you know, it takes a lot of planning and a lot of work that, unfortunately, the school systems haven't gotten that done. You know, they, they've got a lot of video surveillance, and I'm sure there's tons of post-incident video of this kid and what he did. And I read one report from one of his fellow students who said, you know, he, he had gone to that school, so he was there when they did active shooter training. So he knew every place that everyone was going to go shelter uh, and hide and all that kind of stuff because right. he'd been through it as a student himself. So he sort of knew what to expect. And um, that's sort of that, that insider threat knowledge that we talk about. And you know, he that made, the him crowd. made him particularly lethal. So he pulled the fire alarm and yeah. walked in with the crowd. Sure. So he, he knew all yeah, that. Yeah, pulled the fire alarm and walked in. That, I, that, should, that should alert people immediately when someone's going into a building with a fire alarm. And they the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, warning. Uh, the, the teacher who stepped in the line of fire, uh, sure. that kind of person isn't as exceptionally rare as we might think. That, that teacher... Is is in my opinion uh, that that that's the American spirit. That's as heroic as he gets. That's that that's the hero doing what heroes do. And I want to just tell our audience out there that all your law enforcement officials out there and all your uniformed armed services members, those are the kind of people that do the same thing all day. They're every day. sworn to protect you. All enemies, foreign and domestic, it's in the oath. Yeah. They'll jump in the way. They'll take the bullet yeah. because. You're, you're paying for it. It's your tax dollars, and they swore the oath. Yeah. They signed that blank check up until death, unfortunately. And here, and here we had a, a teacher. I believe he was a PE teacher, or, or he, was a co he was a coach, um, who obviously took that same level of responsibility for those students right. and stepped up to the door. As an educator, you, you, you do the same thing. You're there to protect the students as well as educate them, and, and he took it seriously, and God bless him. Yeah, and I don't that's... know if he was prior military or not. I don't know where he got that or, or just raised well, you know, but that, that sort of thing is commendable. You know, we, I think it all started when that, that uh, group jumped on the, 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 the guys that were trying to crash that plane into the Pentagon, and they, huh. took that, they took that flight down. Remember that? They were that's able right. to crash one. They crashed in Indiana somewhere, and they knew that. They knew that they were gonna, the plane was going to crash, but they stopped the shooter. And they stopped the plane from doing further damage, hitting a big city or whatever it was. So, and they gave their life for and it. They gave their heroes. life for it. So yeah. heroes. And so I think, to, to me, that's what that's sort of been the rise of that stuff. And I'm, uh, I'm always proud of Americans, anyone who who takes that on, you know, because uh, you you give up your own. That's a little altruism there when you're you're giving up your own safety for the safety of others. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's a commendable human, it's a commendable human trait. That's right. You're not there for the praise afterwards. 
Uh, this no, is a permanent deal. You don't deal. get the ribbons. No. Uh, but uh, you're right. That's, in, in my opinion, that's the American spirit, and that's the way we should be. And those, those kind of people can be trusted to own firearms. Yeah. It's the people that uh, are malicious and mean. And, uh, yeah, and I don't, I don't know the answer. You know, there's just, there's, there's always going to be this. And if it's, you know, we've seen in, in Europe where there's not a lot of guns, they use knives and other, there's yeah. cars, right, vans across the bridge killing people. I mean, so weapons, you know, the type of weapon used, it's, it's that mentality that makes someone want to act out in that way that we need to work on detecting. Now, we could scale back. One of the arguments is let's take away all weapons. Well, then, we, but, you could scale back the amount of damage gonna, done. How are you going to take them away? I, in America, from the criminals. I mean, really, you already own them. Really hard in yeah, America. I think to take it's away ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just a ridiculous proposal. I, yeah. I would gladly give mine up if I knew no one else had any. I would have no problem. You know, me with too. That. Uh, if, we pay if, taxes for law enforcement sure. to carry weapons, so yeah. More like, power I have, to them. Not, yeah, they don't bother me. But I mean, if I know that none of the crooks have them, you know what yeah. I'm saying? If I know everybody else, all the normal people that aren't aren't like the police are armed, military's armed, no one else has any, and that's for sure. I don't need any. I'd be I'm not worried about those guys yeah, bugging right. me. I'd be comfortable with yeah. that. I would miss my target shooting. Well, I, I use a Pelagon. Yeah, I, I, I pick up a bow and arrow. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, you know. <laughs> well, let's we talk, can go back to the We're uh, talking the about defense shots, of our nation you know? and military now. Let's, let's move on to, like, the cyber field, our, our area. Okay. Now, we <laughs> Robert Mueller today announced, and the FBI announced, uh, Rob Rosenstein gave a press conference on this, 13 indictments of Russian uh, people. Uh, cool. And entities for uh, actually meddling in our election process. Awesome. They they're the so ones that do this. He's getting film. to the ground. He's getting to ground zero. Good. I think he's he's getting to the actual crimes now, Good. and and he's got indictments on on four people plus these thirteen Russians, and and we're getting down to where we've proven that Russia did interfere with our election process. Whether they swung it one way or the other, we can't prove sure. yet. But I think he's going one way rather than the other. But for right mm. now, we know it happened, and it's mostly through social media. Hmm. And they, uh, Rob Rosenstein uh, gave this one example. There were two demonstrations in uh, 2016 scheduled uh, post-election for New York, one for Trump and one against Trump on okay. the same day, both scheduled by these trolls from Russia. Oh, I see. Okay. And, and they were doing this to create dissent. Okay. Right? You know, sure. Divide. divide. Divide and conquer. Yeah, divide yeah. and conquer. So we're all the victims of this. And it's, it's good to know that these Russians are being indicted. However, it's not all of them. Right after this tragedy in Florida, right after that, another Russian trolling, I guess I'll call it a service company, posted to Facebook numerous times for pro-gun legislation oh, and some anti-gun legislation. Yeah, trying, trying so to divide and conquer. Here we go again. I split a nation and the nation is weaker. It's that simple. It's I, good... I think it goes to that and it's going to go deeper. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to tell my students about... Uh, so. I, I teach network defense, and we were talking sure. about networking, and, and they, they said, well, really, what could, could we do? We're just, you know, I'm, I'm a network administrator, so who cares? I said, it depends on who you are and what the criminals are going after. Keep up with current affairs. Mm -hmm. So current affairs right now, North Korea needs money. Lots of sanctions. They need money. So what are they going to do? They'll steal it. Mm -hmm. They were into the SWIFT system, the banking money transfer system, and they got $80 million. They're into Bitcoin. They took a whole bunch of that. Um, uh, no, that's another cryptocurrency, not Bitcoin. Ethereum? Um, not that either. I'm sorry. I'm, I just need, I need to save Bitcoin. There's too many it wasn't nowadays. That. I don't There's even so know. There's so many. But uh, they're, they're involved in stealing money. So if you're a network administrator and you work at a place that does coin exchange or Bitcoin or you work at a bank, you're actually helping to defend this country. Oh, yeah. Just by securing your network. Sure. Right? And the people that work in the election committees, and we're going to talk about election hacking here now, too, those people that, that are... For, uh, that do security at the election committees for the Democratic or Republican parties, they're defending their nation because that's our electoral process. Mm -hmm. If somebody else outside our country chooses our leaders, then we have lost our voice. And then what is this? This is no longer yeah. a republic with representative government. We no longer have a democratic process. We don't have a choice. So if our leaders know mm -hmm. that they can't be voted out of office, Mm -hmm. They're not beholden to our wishes anymore. Be because of outside influences from right. outside the country. Gotcha. Well, it isn't like we haven't been guilty of some of that ourselves, installing governments into places. But, but You don't mean Iran. When it's happened to or... us, <laughs> when it's happened to us, all of a sudden maybe we start to see some of the downsides. What's good of, for the goose of, now. Of yeah. what, you know, what can actually happen in, in our country. And I mean, the divisiveness is an interesting tactic. They don't care. They just want to divide. Is what it seems like to me. 
Well, they, I think they're destroying our faith in the electoral process. So we're going to take oh. a break. We're going to come right back. Yep. We're going to pay some bills, and then we'll continue this discussion. This is important. Come on back. Stay safe. Hey, hey, baby, that's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. We're talking about protecting our democratic process here by keeping up our network infrastructure and security measures. I mean, things like the Democrat, uh, Democratic National Convention, is that what the DNC mm. stands for? Yeah. And uh, Republican National Convention, the yeah. other big party. And they have, of course, networks, infrastructure, email. They got to keep private and keep it away from the other guys. Uh, and and not be fooled into doing something silly. So let's talk Whoops. about March 10th uh, of 2016, the oh. DNC hacked, so they did a phishing yeah, it scam. Yeah, was a phishing scam. It was, right? a phishing. it was broadly targeted. Email Is phishing, right, and they yeah. threw out, okay. so apparently the first 29 that went out were uh, sent out to people that had worked on the previous election campaign gotcha. for Clinton, okay. so they, they didn't respond, of course, they but the last even, one. Those, those emails weren't even active anymore. Right, I would, so the would, number would, 30 think. hit home. I see. And someone responded, and from then on, Whoops. man of control from inside, and they could get anything they wanted. And that's when things went downhill mm. for the Democrats. And then let's talk about... So, uh, and then they were able to mine all this information and spin it and do still it. don't know how, what they got out. The forensics in state investigation? State secrets? <laughs> she was Secretary Party of State. Party secrets? Yeah. Party secrets for sure. sure. Um, but then let's talk about the election okay. machines. There, we have computerized election and election machines oh, yeah. in, in almost all states now. Diebold makes them. And Diebold, okay. <laughs> I did not know that. Diebold. No, they're right not. Right there in Ohio. They're not on the internet. I don't know all that the they time. make all of them. I'm not trying to throw a hook into Diebold or anything. Yeah, we don't just plug these things into the Ethernet all the time. They're not Wi Fi devices, they're standalone yeah. kiosks all the time. Sure. And they record information. But the way you get information onto them and update them and get information back from yeah. them, you need a connection of some kind. Yeah. And it could be a USB flash drive, it could be your computer with a cable. But every time that happens, there's a chance malware can shift over yeah. to the machine itself. And the machine can be altered to do what you want it to do. We had 21 states attacked. Oh. And nobody wants to admit that their machines actually were altered oh. in their behavior. So oh. as we know, once you're identified as somebody who's, who's been hacked, the, the PR spin begins. Because you want to out... Yeah, depending on if you won or lost right. in that state. <laughs> you got to spin it positive. And yeah. Equifax tried that in 17 different ways and just lost their shirt on that. Yeah. And I'm thinking we're going to find out some of our electoral process was hacked. Well, can we just use paper and a pencil? Or is it just slow? Well, then we have hanging chads. Remember that? Oh, that was that. Yeah, the whole Florida thing. Well, we can... can we, I mean, just... A, just everybody can just send me your votes. I'll just... How about that? I trust you. <laughs> In fact, I'll email you. How many you people vote? vote? Like hundreds of million, right? Like I'll, I'll be busy. That's going to be a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, if we rely on technology, people are going to learn to manipulate technology. We already know that the vulnerabilities tend to lead the production, right? We just because there's let's just say there's 50 engineers working to build something, there's 500 working to hack it, and so the the fact of the matter is that we're probably going to continue to be reactive unless we can somehow build the a perfect machine, and that doesn't seem to really be affordable. We can't build perfect because we're not perfect. Yeah, and, it, and it's just not affordable, right? So, oh, I mean, yeah. you know, there's, you can't, from a production perspective, spend that much time in development. So there's going to be holes, there's going to be vulnerabilities. And so our, our reliance on the type of technology we've been using, maybe this incident is the thing that's going to say, you know what, we need better technology. Maybe we need 
uh, may, maybe somehow blockchain can be deployed to, to track these votes so that they can at least be recounted That's properly. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, brilliant. I, you know, some but way, they all have to be connected on the internet at the same time to do that. Yeah, and something that's auditable, right? So that we can at least go back and get the accurate count. Because I'm not even confident that once it's, once they say, oh, because what if we get all, all the states say, oh, we don't trust our election, which is what you were talking about, right? right. And, and these guys, because they're dividing us, we're no one's trusting things that we've trusted in this nation for the last, well, since technology rising, you know, last 30, 40 years, we've started to build our processes around trusting in technology. Now we're finding, wow. It can be used against us yeah, for divisive purposes. Not necessarily for this guy to win or this guy to win, but just to divide us, just so we fight, just so there's no trust. If we don't trust our process, is what you said earlier, the process is not going to be of any value to us. Right. So if we have, then what do we do? And then if we can have an election all we want. If nobody believes in them, it'll be like all these other countries that are rioting all the time about that we don't want this guy. He was illegally elected. Right. You know, he, it's, all, it's all fake. Nobody, nobody really voted for him. Just, and then the tanks roll through the streets and we have a revolution. Tanks roll through the streets. Yeah. And then they, you know what they're going to do is point, a house, point their tank at your house like Castro did and say, bring out your guns. You've got <laughs> these seven. I've yeah. reproduced them now. That's right. Or we're going to take care of your house right. for you. So um, <laughs> I love your idea about blockchain, actually. Uh, well, I mean, maybe we'd it's have auditable. To you connect know? them all. But yeah. well, our audience should know blockchain is what supports uh, cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a transaction record. You know, right. that's agreed upon by everyone that it actually occurred. Well, so. everyone has a copy of it. Yeah. Or most people do. Yeah, so it's hard to really, you know, so at least it ought to be auditable. To but fake I, it. I don't know how hard that is or expensive. Real challenge to fake that stuff. Yeah. But blockchain so. would be good. The only problem is all the devices would have to be on the internet all the time. Uh, and if they're on the internet, yeah, if they're on the internet at all times, I mean, it's only a matter of time. And we got to talk about, too, uh, when somebody wants to hack you, uh, now we let's let's go back to some, something small like uh, our cybersecurity club at Capulana Community College. Okay. Very small. There's maybe 20 people at any given penetration test that we do. Okay. And they do open source intelligence and then the email phishing, and it's a lot of hard slogging work. Work. You got to really dig deep on the deep web and the dark web, phishing information out, and then crafting these emails and then and carefully sending them just the right way. And it takes a long time. Sometimes we work several months on this stuff mm. to get that one person to respond so we can get in there and get command and control of the network. And that's just 20 kids over a couple of months and just one little nonprofit or something that we're working with. Uh, it's a charitable thing. But think about our electoral system is a huge target. And a country like Russia has virtually unlimited time and resources to throw at this. Mm -hmm. If they want a budget of $500 million, they snap their fingers and they get $500 million and 800 people working on this 24-7. And if we've got our election machines online, guarantee you they're going to be hacked. They're beating on them. Yeah, they'll be beating them to death. Knocking on the doors sure. all day long and twice on Sunday. And, I, and I'm sure they've already got the code and, you know, they just... <laughs> reverse engineer it. I mean, you know, I mean, you know how these guys. You got to think they're, what's more valuable though. Every angle. Undermining the whole process or switching the election for the candidate. They well, want. I, you know, it's like if they wanted to, if they wanted to do that, it's one thing. But you know, the the social media effort, right, seemed to uh, must have had some effect. It seems to have gotten a lot of people's attention, um, and you know that maybe a lot of people actually believe all the stuff that they read without actually verifying it. I don't. I maybe? didn't know that that was. <laughs> Is that from years of sitting around watching? Like we had Walter Cronkite. You used to trust him back in the day, right? Sure, yeah. And then today, I guess, do you not trust TV? So why do they trust their social media but not TV? I don't know. Well, we, I, it, we have something that I consider state-sponsored, and that's Fox News. That's state-sponsored? I, I consider that state-sponsored. Every time I turn on TV, oh, whatever twist they're putting on a story, it's always favoring the current administration. There's nothing I against see. the current administration. Ever. I see. In fact, the indictments against... So that's not against, very good news. Well, not good news I source. like to take multiple sources yeah. and then fish out the facts. Uh -huh. And then I can make my own choices. I see. But I don't think we're training our kids how to do that anymore. I guarantee you there's 33% no. of the population right now that doesn't do this. And I know exactly who they are. I don't. I don't even have... I don't watch, I don't watch any of those. I don't watch CNN or I don't watch the news. How I do you get your news? Uh, I read the paper and I follow like Slashdot and have some sources, but they're techie sources, not necessarily, and they, they publish political stuff, but I just don't read. I guess I don't, I'm not that engaged in the, the politics, maybe as, I, maybe as I should be. I don't know. Well, it, you know, I don't like it's it up when to they, you, well, I don't but like you it get when your the, sources from um, not just national, but international. 
Iowa. Yeah, sure. I go outside of the country. Yeah, the register. I, I go to, oh yeah, uh, B, uh, the UK has some sure. really good sources. But also, I used, to, I used to read the publications in Al Jazeera. Oh, nice. To get a completely different viewpoint yeah. on the same topic at the same time. And I'd actually get uh, literally a different uh, photo from a different angle in the same wow. arena. Because they're on the other side shooting in and, uh -huh. and America shoot on the other side of the conflict just shooting on the other side. So you get both angles, you get both viewpoints, and that's, I think that's valuable. Informative. Too. But it takes time. Yeah, yeah. And it takes effort. Yeah, and, and the, back to the, the hacking of our systems themselves, like you said, the, if, if these guys are willing to spend the money, they could absolutely probably break our country's will, you mm. know? Uh, it may take a few cycles, but eventually, I mean, this has been, I don't remember as a kid, I remember when Reg, when uh, Nixon got impeached, I remember that, you know, and it's maybe it all started to degrade after that, but until the there was the thing in Florida, maybe that was the hanging chads, and there's all of a sudden there started to be these things about elections and people challenging the election results, and it, it seems like now that's a constant, like every year, this, or every four years, this is happening, and I don't remember that when I was young, and maybe... I didn't vote then, so did people do it by hand and fill out a little? You know how you take those little tests with the, you fill in the little squares? Or? Some states did. Other states had the, the stampers, the mm -hmm. things that caused the hanging chads in Florida. Oh, like a, so you picked them and then it punched it them punched and left. It out. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, but if it has to go back to by hand to restore faith, <clears throat> then that's probably what we should do. I think a lot of people don't trust this electoral college process because those people <laughs> can be influenced. And we had a we have, social media. We've had several different <laughs> yeah by social media. We have had several different elections in just in my lifetime. That <coughs> the electoral college was the deciding factor, not the popular vote. Mm -hmm. They did not match. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I, I don't either. And electoral college was developed in the eight, uh, 1780s, and it was a system because most people couldn't come in to vote, so they trust their electoral college members. Because it was rural. It's very rural. That that was America back then. Now not so much. Uh, <coughs> we proved it this time with our. Our popular vote. So I think maybe that's a big problem too. Facebook posting news stories, huge issue. Because no one who reads through Facebook, or at least very few people, are clicking on those links and saying, well, can I find that information on another source? Mm. Or is that solo? Because yeah, if it's a solo it, source. It's fake, yeah. Yeah, if it's, it's fake, you don't want to read it. Yeah, there's definitely people investing time and money into creating news that is un unreal, uh, utterly unreal, utterly fabricated. So we I got we one more thing. We got two things. Let's put up the IOS crash symbol real quick. I'm going to do this. Whoops. This is a uh, uh, Telugu symbol. If someone symbol texts from, you that, you're in trouble. Yeah, this is an Indian symbol. You can do this in Unicode in text, and it produces this symbol, and it will crash your iOS device. So if you actually find this, don't text it. Upon anybody. receipt, it will do that. It will crash your phone. It consumes too many resources trying to display. So they say to send the thread to someone else so that it can be deleted. Don't just delete it yourself from your phone because then you got no way to get rid of it. Ah. Oh. So and keep the thread alive. Box. Call somebody and say, I'm going to send you this thing. Keep the thread alive so you can delete the thread. Ah, that's a good, good idea. That was from uh, somebody I was reading. <laughs> I forget it. Somebody smarter than me. Okay, well, that's it. That's all the show we got today. And that was, wow, that goes fast. Uh, we'll see you next Friday. Um, we're going to have a special episode next Friday. I will not be here. But the president of the Hawaii Advanced Technology Society, Hats, Hats Rochelle, Rochelle Mulligan will be Good. here, and she's going to do uh, some stuff with the Hats Club. She'll have some members here, do a couple of the demos, and uh, give us some real good. I like it. All right, sign on and give the Hats kids some love. All right, until then, stay safe.